And I'd like to call the order of this uh, Hampshire County Board of Education, September the 5th work session. Welcome everybody who's here tonight. Glad to see all of y'all out. Uh, first item on our work session agenda is uh, Director Coach Dodge going to come with a safety presentation. Good afternoon, board. Uh, the first thing I'd like to start with is to kind of do a brief recap of the situation at the middle school football game. And what I, I've got a statement that I'd like to read to alleviate any lingering concerns. I want to follow up on the football stadium incident involving a juvenile with a gun that took place on August 15th, 2024. The juvenile was not a student of the Habersham County School System. The SRO immediately took control of the juvenile, separated the juvenile from the rest of those at the event, secured the weapon, and secured the juvenile without incident. The handgun was loaded at the time it was taken. The investigation was left open so that we would be available to accept and follow up on information that was brought to our attention as part of the police department investigation. As of today, no one has contacted the police department with any additional information. As you well understand, the investigation can only be based on the facts revealed through eyewitness testimony or information that was gathered at the time of the incident. Uh, to date, there are no facts at all that support the premise that the juvenile had intent to harm anyone in particular or anyone in general. Additionally, there is no factual basis to believe that there were any other juveniles or adults involved. The juvenile was charged by our police department. The juvenile was detained. The juvenile was transported to the RYDC. And now the juvenile is under the custody and control of the Department of Juvenile Justice. So the matter has, in our minds, been resolved. Okay. Thank you. As far as there have also been questions on what safety measures we have in place. And obviously with current events, unfortunately unfolding as they have, um, I wanted to provide you with some information that may comfort you and the community, school community in reference to what we've got going on and what we're doing. So some current safety initiatives we have some brand new beautiful working access control systems and advanced surveillance cameras at our schools so understand that we can see everything and we have do have controlled access uh, safety vestibules designed to prevent people from getting to our staff and our students so there's already a second layer of protection there Ongoing emergency response preparedness. We are meeting with all of our uh, emergency response partners and we are be, be getting more and more prepared uh, to deal with the unthinkable. So please understand that we are constantly training and working on that. Ongoing district safety meetings and trainings that allow us at a district wide and a particular school to be better prepared. Uh, biannual school site safety assessments each semester I'm going to go to the schools we're going to review all of the 60 something measures that we have on our school site safety assessment and we're going to make sure that we in compliance with all of them if we're not we're going to get in compliance with them so we do that twice a year uh, door checks throughout the day at each school and they are logged so we are very determined to make sure that our doors are checked, that they're working properly, and they're secured at all times. School system, my office as your school system safety director and chief of police and another SRO is now stationed, thanks to Mr. Cooper and Mr. Franklin, at Habersham Central High School. So we have an immediate presence there all day, every day, and it still allows me the ability to go to other schools and help where I'm needed. Uh, additionally, we also have eight other SROs that are helping to cover the additional schools in our system. So we've got very good coverage at this time and we're always working to strengthening that even more. Uh, strong partnerships with our local 
uh, city fire and EMS and police, and then of course our Habersham County Sheriff's Office and our Habersham County Fire and EMS. We are building very, very strong relationships and they keep getting better and better. Um, Sheriff Terrell has been a tremendous support to us, especially during this time of yesterday and this morning when we needed that extra coverage and that extra uh, law enforcement visibility, he was right there to help us. So we very much appreciate that. Um, two of the biggest things that I think that I really think, do think is important for school safety is our mental health and our counselors. I think they are doing a tremendous job in helping us to incorporate these kids into something at school and allowing them to have a positive experience at our schools, which means that they're, they're active and they're involved. So we believe that's a true deterrent just in itself to everything else that we're doing. Also, just so you know, as school safety director, every time we do something, I evaluate it to see how we can improve upon it, but also I am always looking for ways to do new things, to initiate new opportunities for us to get better and better at safety. So know that we are constantly working on building and improving what we already do well. Do you have any questions that I might be able to answer for you? Let's make a note too. Murray, that we're going to bring in our Director of Mental Health Services and our Counseling Coordinator Monday night. Murray will do the same presentation at the regular board meeting, which will be recorded. We'll have Angie Kerr and Daphne Penny both present. I believe the superintendent, I know our school leaders and our system leaders would agree with me that what we do in the area of mental health and counseling is very important to us. So we're going to hear from both of them Monday night, the very good things we have in place that go so far and are so significant keeping our school safe. So I'm going to look forward to hearing from that Monday night in addition to our just so y'all know. Well, Director Kevin, I would really appreciate the update. Yes, sir. Thank you. Both of those. Absolutely. Uh, it is a uh, we're the trying time right now. Yes, <laughs>
So he is, uh, he's with us, but not physically with us, okay? So second item on our agenda tonight, uh, Mr. Bishop, if you'll come up, we're going to do a public art center discussion. I guess Mr. Franklin also. Good evening, board. Appreciate having Mr. Bishop here. We have talked for several months on our efforts to uh, improve the Performing Arts Center and things to do there. And I thought it would be great for y'all to hear from Mr. Bishop because it's not not something I'm dealing with on a day to day. But he he has a great hand in this and really runs that facility. Does an amazing job. Um, he's going to share some information with you just about the number of events we have there, and you know we're, we'll talk about lighting as we go in. That would be the first step of our renovations to that facility. So, Mr. Bishop, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you for being here tonight. All right. Thank you to the Board of Education for having me. Um, to let you kind of know just how many students and community members this um, facility services at any given um, time, I asked some of my colleagues to send me some of their numbers of how many events, how many students are involved, and how many participants, family members, community members come to see it. And just in our band alone, we have no fewer than three concerts per year, a Christmas, a pre-LGBE, and a spring concert. But in addition to those, there are actually 29 just high school band events that happen during the course of a school year. Each band concert draws about five to 600 uh, viewers and serves about 150 to 200 of our students. If you consider that we then add in the middle school bands, they also have two to three concerts a year, service about a slightly smaller number of students, but pull a comparable audience. We could also include our high school chorus, which has three concerts a year minimally, pulls the same sort of audience and services about 200 students, Multiply that by three for our middle school uh, concerts. We then are, have the opportunity to host events like Angela Frady will bring the, um, her school, her elementary schools, and we will host their elementary school play, often with standing room only in that event. In addition to the plays that I direct, Little Mermaid last year as being a good example, we do about four a year, and that pulled about 500 people to watch it just on one night. It was a four-night run, and we have about 75 to 80 kids involved in it at the end of the day. And of course, this doesn't even include the fact that we use the facility near daily as a teaching facility, that we host assemblies in there frequently, that we have graduation practice in there, honors nights, scholarship nights, academic letter receptions, the list goes on. When you add the fact of the community use of the facility, we've been very pleased to host, I think it was about 10 years of the Dancing with the Stars event, raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for Circle of Hope. We've been uh, pleased to host dance troops from the local community, um, a community theater events, and just the list goes on. It's a facility that is in high use and is in many ways the public face of not only our school, but in some ways the school system itself. But we have reached a point with the state of the technology in the, in, the, uh, in the Performing Arts Center. And the fact of the matter is that we're simply reaching an end of life for a great deal of the technology. A lot of it is using some of the older incandescent technology or the fluorescent tube lighting that is not only getting harder to source and repair, but is about to become impossible to do so in the case of some of the specialized technology. That's been putting us in a number of binds we've been able to get through, but looking to the future, we're hopefully not only to replace that, but to create a, a really uh, wonderful environment for our students that can foster the type of education that we'd like them uh, to receive and be a real good reflection for our community. Um, just to give you an idea of um, some of the benefits of this, other than just replacing the technology that is reaching its end of life, I believe we also should consider the fact that we will immediately, as a county, begin to recuperate savings from this event. Remember, we are moving from an incandescent system to an LED system. I'm sure you can imagine the impact that that's had in energy savings in your own home. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, one of our theatrical lighting racks has six fixtures on it. Each fixture has three lights in it. Each light is 1,000 watts. One rack is 18,000 watts. Now, there are five theatrical racks. Multiply that by five. Now consider the enormous amount of heat put out by those lights that are then having to be combated by our um, air conditioning systems. And I can attest to the heat on the slide. Uh, I accidentally touched one on my forearm just the other, uh, the other uh, month or so. They are tremendously hot. LEDs put out little to no heat. 
because we have to make this um, upgrade eventually, why not go ahead and begin to recuperate the savings and these energy costs as soon as possible? I would be happy to answer any specific questions you have about it, um, if you have any at all. When, when the modifications are done, will there always be someone from your your aid or whatever to, to oversee so that if a, another group comes in, it may not be as familiar, they just don't get in and start to No one uses the facility without a faculty member uh, there, present, and uh, making sure that they are not messing with the, the insides of things. So. No doubt that the LED we've got to embrace the new technology. And I know lighting is, I guess, the first step. I'm sure that the same on and everything else we can Yes, sir. And we can do. talk about that at this point. This will be the first step in upgrading our, our PAC. As you can see, board, we, we put the bid sheet in there. We had two companies bid on the project. Uh, the low bid would be four wall entertainment at $499,842.17. You can see that's significantly lower than the other bid, and that does not, you don't have, these fixtures come with the light there. You know, it's an LED light. You're not buying bulbs and, and that thing to, to add expense. Um, the second part, to answer your question, Coach West, would be sound and video, which we are finishing now, and it, it, it will be out soon, and that would be the next step in, in the upgrade. Well, Mr. Bishop. That is plenty of numbers. You left out all the honors and stuff. We use yes, sir. We use it for honor presentations and That's things right. like that. That's right. Uh, graduation and all that. So that there's still even more of this used. But uh, I'm, I'm all for uh, that prejudice thing. I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but I'm, I'm all for it. Well, like I said, I've, we've been, I've been there with Doug and so Joey and all the others uh, at some point in time, and, and it. Uh, you know, you're right in the sense that it's served its purpose, but it's, um, you know, we won't have to move up to that next level. Well, we're proud. Yeah. We're proud of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. When people come up there, we want it to be talking. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, it's success for all students, and it includes especially those fine arts students as right. well, that it impacts so many people in our community. And I'd like to thank Mr. Bishop. He's been instrumental in working through this process over the last year. Um, it's good to finally be able to, to start to move on that. So is this going to be a business item for Monday night? Yes, sir. If the board so chooses, it'll be a business so item for Monday night. The four wall entertainment. Yes, sir. Okay. And it's just just the light. That yes, sir. And to go into a little more detail, essentially every light in that performing arts center will will be changed and upgraded i'm talking about from the control booth stage lighting floor lighting mm -hmm. uh, you know anything in there will be sconces everything so it will be a LED with theater lights are still going to have the same lighting uh man on it it, it will be better because not only will we have just as much illumination right. the new technology will allow us to do very interesting things with color it'll be an enormous change right. well, the same Several years by doing this is going to pay for itself. I think so. Uh, I don't have any other questions, y'all. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Franklin, since you're up there, just stay up there and we'll do a facility report. Thank you, board. We'll be we'll be very brief tonight in the facilities world. We're we're in a transition. We're, we finished up Clarksville Elementary. Have a couple punch item lists that we're we're working through, and with that, we're gearing up for the Hazel Grove and Woodville projects that we've discussed over the last year. Uh, those being windows replacement at Hazel Grove and classroom office reconfiguration, secure entrance um, at Woodville, and and the phase right now board is to complete the design so that we may bring you a guaranteed maximum price in the coming months and have it set for summer work so that when we finish on graduation night we can begin those projects and complete those projects this summer 
going down the list, when when that guaranteed maximum price and that timeline is set for Hazel Grove Wood, we'll be able to switch again board to our athletic facilities in the John Larry Black and weight room. So hopefully a little later in the year, we'll bring you some designs and concepts and, and, and more movement on that project at, at that time. I want to thank Dennis and his team board and Denise. We're about 90% through with our keyless entry project. We spoke last month due to the start of school, um, our contractors are working at night. And those are some doors that take, you know, typically some of our doors can take up to 12 hours to, to access. So we're slowly finishing that, that project toward the end of September, early October, depending on you know how things go uh, we should be completely done but very successful at this point i've heard i've heard no negatives at this time i think it's been a great safety upgrade for our for our system and our, and our staff board and then again the last item was the performing arts center that we did as kind of a standalone and we included that bid sheet for you to see the lighting and then the next step board we will release for a video and projection and sound to look at and then we'll bring you those those projects at a later time. Do our first responders have uh, a card for the keyless entry? At this time board, I don't have an answer on that. I'll have to check on that. But we do have the ability board if they need to get in, we can do that remotely. Okay. What what I mean by that is like Dennis or, or um, Chief Kogod can can do that through uh, a computer and open open a door or doors or lock doors down. Yes. Uh, bring something up that's not on our list that's come to my attention. Um, that it probably is going to be a uh, could be a spot item. So um, it's come to my attention that probably uh, we're at the end of cycle on our football field curve. Um, I've heard several officials and so and from our AD that says that it's probably the time to change that. So I'm wondering if we might need to add that to a project list to start investigating that. Because the perfect timing to do that if it's required would be right after graduation. We can definitely, we have started the, the process of talking with vendors and whatnot and what that would look like, sir, because um, it would be less um, intensive than when it was first installed. And so we can bring you some info on that in the, in the coming, coming months. Thank you, board. Okay, Ms. Robinson, you're next with the system calendar discussion. Good evening, and I appreciate you letting me come tonight. Um, I'm proposing that we change um, our process, or not our process, but our timeline for our calendar. Um, we've always started the process in January and tried to bring a calendar to you uh, for the February board meeting. And um, we get complaints every year from parents and church groups and different people who are trying to plan things in the summer um, because our calendar comes out so late. And so we would like to move that up this year and bring a calendar to you for the um, December meeting. Um, it'll be this, we're gonna use the same process, but it'll give us more time. Um, in the past, you know, we've ha kind of had to rush and, and my committee has to go back to the school and then come back and report. And this way we can actually um, have time to have some really good discussion in our schools and um, the committee can, can do their due diligence to make sure that we get that good calendar that will be right for our school system. So what we're proposing is that we start our process in October. Um, we would choose our committee members and um, have our first meeting um, in October. And I gave you that timeline um, there for, your, for you to review. Um, we usually have two to three meetings with that calendar committee. And so if we start in October, that would give us uh, time to have a couple of meetings um, in October. And then we would have our final one um, there around the 1st of November. We also do a parent committee, and um, 
it would give us time to meet with parents then in October also. So I've given you a date for that uh, particular meeting also. And then we also allow our principals to have a vote. And so it would give them time to also look at the calendar over and choose which one would be best for their school. And then at the work session in December, I would come back and um, present those drafts to you and give you the feedback from the committees that we have. And then hopefully we would be ready to adopt the calendar in um, December. I think it would help our community be able to plan camps and things in the summer, but it would also be able to help you because you choose your board meeting dates and you would already have the calendar so you could see when the holidays were that, it, that are already set for the calendar. I think that would help you also. So that's what I'm proposing, and um, we would hope to get started then in October. I like it. Thank you. We'll start with the planning. There's no doubt about that. All right. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Okay, I'm number five on our agenda tonight. Ms. Walker's going to come down and give us the strategic plan progress report for the Transportation. Good afternoon, Mr. Cooper, board and guest. For those who might not know, I'm Stephanie Walker. I'm the director for transportation for the school system. And first, I want to say I appreciate the support we get from our superintendent, our board, assistant superintendent. We appreciate the idea of knowing that um, we work closely together with everyone to make sure we carry those things across, success for all students and safety number one. So that's that's huge for us. So I've got a clicker, don't I? I forgot about that. So with doing that, just wanna do a quick overview for those that may not have um, seen me talk lately or know what we're about and how we're made up. Um, Cause usually nobody sees us except those yellow buses going down the road. So we do have some staffing. We have a little bit of administrative um, personnel that we have in our office. And we also, the bus shop is a part of our department. So we have those mechanics and fleet support and they didn't know I took a picture or they would have been hiding. So those are a couple of our mechanics that are working on one of our buses in the fleet there at the bus shop. It takes a huge effort from everybody to make those buses roll every single day. And we've, of course, the main ones you know of is the route and shuttle bus drivers and of course our bus aides or formerly known as monitors. So our bus aides, it takes everybody to make this thing work. And so we just, we have a great team and every day we see their greatness come out, which makes me greatly appreciated and fortunate. So our average work day, um, we begin rolling buses by 5.30 a.m. First buses are rolling out, they've gotta to get to a certain location to start pickups. Um, we do a variety of that. So we're up early and we've gotta set substitutes and whatnot in case we got illnesses or something happening. Um, our last afternoon drop off right now is about 4.40 p.m. That's after regular routes. And of course, even today we started after school. So we've got some after school programs and we're generally wrapped up on that by 6 p.m. So it's, um, it's a good 12 hour day there if you go from one extent to the other. Um, one of the most interesting counts that I come up with is how many days did we have buses rolling during a calendar year? And this past year was 283 out of 365 days. So 82 days of the last year, we did not have a bus rolling on the road. There's only 52 weeks, you know? So we are rolling constantly. We roll when school's not in, there might be fall breaks. There's um, fall break, Christmas break, Thanksgiving, you name it, we're on the road. So we're operating constantly. Some of the student services that we do, which require us to operate, um, we of course do 
we support the programs during the day, which are the, like the cohort program, the welders that go from the high school to North Georgia Technical College. They have an assigned driver and we take care of them. Uh, we have our discovery students. We do community-based instructional time. This is more the special needs department and we take those children out to do community-based instruction. We also have altered day students. So you'll see our buses throughout the day taking care of those students who have a little bit different time schedule for school. Uh, we have our after school programs. We're running ninth grade right now. Uh, we have lift program and teach one, lead one, which are some of the hub of Habersham institutional instructions that help support our kids here in the system. We run our summer programs, so we run all summer long. We do any kind of um, summer school, like credit recovery programs. We run Boys and Girls Club, Tim Lee Club. We run that all summer. We do the pre-K transition program, nutrition deliveries. We're out there. And of course, we've got all of our, vars our varsity, junior varsity, middle school, all the athletics, and the fine arts clubs. So we support all of those too. So we touch generally every student's lives in the system. So part of the strategic report was um, efficiency and effectiveness for our department. So I took a screenshot of some of our routing software and I thought this would be um, interesting to you to see what we use as analytical data. We look at how efficient is the, is the department and how are we going to plan and what are we trying to predict what's going to happen, how many houses are going to be built on this road, or how much more are we going to have ridership in one area than another. There is a lot of information that we have to look at. But our routing system, uh, we actually upgraded this, um, it's been a little over a year ago, and this has, we are very pleased with the upgrade in the software. It has done really well. We're, we're just getting into the, the beginning stages of finding out what it can really tell us. And so I'm looking forward to even getting deeper into that. Um, we evaluate what's the function and the feasibility of what we're doing now and what we need to change with. We could add routes all day long, but you gotta have drivers in the seat with the CDL. So those things matter to us. And we are looking at that analytical data constantly. Um, we are a service-driven needs department. If there's a need, we are the service. And part of that is with our special needs, so that's a whole nother layer that requires additional staffing. It might require additional equipment. Uh, right now, we are seeing probably the highest wheelchair count that we transport that we've seen in a very, very long time. Very long time. And one thing I wanted to note was Addie's Law. Addie's Law cha um, came about in the legislation this spring and July 1st went into effect. And just in case anybody's not familiar with Addie or what this law is about, Addie is a little girl, she was nine years old and she came out of, uh, I see the director's face, Henry County. And she came out of Henry County, she was killed back in February at a bus stop crossing the road. So out of that, we have Addie's Law, which increased the fines for a illegal run on a bus stop. It's now $1,000 per citation. We, that's great, it's great deterrence. But the other part of Addie's Law is it states that any roadway that you've got that is 40 miles an hour or more you must consider that your, those students do not cross that road. That can create more puzzle. So we've been looking at that. We actually started a few years back where we said we don't want any kids crossing state highways. So we kind of got a jump on Addie's Law several years ago, just trying to make smarter choices. But when Addie's Law come in, you have to really scrutinize. We started early, we knew it was coming, we knew some form of that law was coming. So we started looking at it and um, I'm just so proud of our drivers who have to turn in this information about their bus routes. And when I asked in the spring, hey, look, here's your form, put down any students that have to cross your roads. 
we're gonna celebrate early, right? Uh, yeah, oh, gotcha. So we started evaluating early. We saw what was coming. We knew we needed time to try to do things right. And so when we sent this form out to our drivers and they had to put this down on paper, they corrected a number of crossings before those papers ever got to me. So proud beyond belief about our staff and their efforts to keep our kids safe. But that is Addie's Law and that is something we will maintain from here on. We would love to get every student door side if at all possible, but unfortunately you might have one bus up in Batesville and no other bus 20 miles away. That's that's difficult to do. But I will report that in Batesville, every one of our state highway kids are door side. We made sure of that. So a little bit more about what we're doing. Um, our teamwork is amazing. We, if you need it, if you have a need, they're coming and they're coming hard. And so we just, we work on that constantly. We're building these cultures of team, teamwork. We're building cultures of continuing education. I am a true believer in continuing education. Nobody knows everything. We can always learn more. Um, our student support, we believe that every student needs a trusted mentor, and that's what we try to be. So our relationships with the students, we build on those. We're building those cultures. It takes a long time, but you build them and it will get stronger and stronger. And of course, one of our biggest, biggest cultures that we focus on is emergency preparedness, any kind of safety. We are all about some safety. So we are constantly evaluating and preparing for that. And speaking of which, just wanted to brag a little bit on my team. Um, our department is growing leaders. This is a, what we call a leader team. We do this once a month during the school months. It is completely voluntary. It's not required. I have a very dedicated group of bus drivers and bus aides that show up every month without fail. These, this group of, um, my, my leader team group is just special. They are there every time and they've been doing it. I think this is year four that I started this and this is me in front of them. They get me for that whole morning or that evening. And we do some serious training. And it's not your basic training, we get deep. And in this picture, you can see that we worked with the Habersham County Fire and Emergency Services, and we actually brought them in. And what we did with this, this is what we call community-based training. What we did was bring them in so they could get familiar with the inside of our buses, the inside of how a special need, this is a special needs bus, how the special needs bus is set up. It has a fire suppression system for electrical fires. So we already have that so they can have hands on and be more prepared if we need them. We also train with them to understand what they're gonna expect if we're getting to a situation they're showing up on, on with us. So it's a win-win on both sides when we do this. Part of the other um, specialized training, we do some fun with some bus rodeo. Those are some tight corners to try. Y'all are welcome to come do it. It'll be in a parking lot, it won't be on the road. Yeah, we'll have you parallel park in 10 minutes, I promise. So we will, we do that, we focus, because the better, the more we train, the better we become. That is our belief. And, and each meeting, of course, is um, topic oriented. We, we start with it and we go deep into each topic and each time it, there's no telling what the topic could be because sometimes as this week has shown, there's some current events that need to be discussed. So this team is fantastic. We go into analytical analysis, uh, even they wanna understand how the department operates. What do we look at? how a school bus accident happens and what could have been prevented and what should you change from here on or hey, should we think about this? They're thinking and it's, it's amazing. Um, this group has actually helped develop some school bus emergency training that we rolled out a couple few years ago with the Georgia S SROs. And so that's the school bus training they do this team is where it created. 
I myself brought it forward. We're about to start developing phase two. And we also present this on the Georgia side of pupil transportation, so on the school bus side. So we've got both sides covered as we go through this. And so it's our local team that is making some headway. So school bus rodeo, I'm gonna invite y'all. It'll be in the spring. You can come drive a bus. We host an annual event and it's actually regional participation. Um, out of our Pioneer RESA group, there's 16 school systems and out of those, we probably get at least five participating because it takes a lot to put on a bus rodeo. You also have to have enough spacing. So we pool our resources, they come over here, we host and we have a great time. We do top awards locally and we do them regionally. And this, I believe in this bus rodeo because you're building some very, very high level drivers when you do this. One last thing I wanted to note on was I um, wanted to celebrate some longevity here. Um, the picture is from the spring with the support person of the year was Mylinda Garrett, who is a bus driver and been on her 46th year this year. And so, but she's not the only one. I've got two more that are 40 years and 44 years. I've got three, I actually think about how four, one of my mechanics is in the 30 plus years. Um, in that category and then the 20 plus and then there's a slew of them that are hitting just below 20 and so i'm just super proud we want them to stay we try to build a place where they can have a career and have a home that is what we try to work on here so board unless you have any questions that's tell you who, where we're at and what I'm working on. I have a comment though. Personally, Stephanie, I have appreciated you so much as a principal where I can text you, call you, you drop everything and your team does as well. So thank you so much. For I appreciate that. It's what we do. Board, if I can take just a moment, I'd like to brag on Miss Walker because um, that was a very condensed version of what goes on. You know, we have over 100 buses on the road every morning and afternoon, especially this time of year with athletics. Mm -hmm. um, 6,000 miles a day that, that we travel on, on average. And she does a phenomenal job. And she mentioned continuing education. She has, uh, she has worked with our state groups and national groups in terms of people transportation and serves in leadership roles with that and has been certified. I'm gonna let you say it so I don't mess it up. But which part? Which the, go ahead and share that with them. So I am currently the president of the Georgia Association for Pupil Transportation this year. I've been on the executive board for three years now. Uh, this is my fourth. And um, I just got designated as a certified instructor with the National Association for Pupil Transportation. Um, I won their Continuing Education Award last October. And, and board, National. What, what I see in other counties is that they struggle for drivers, and it's a constant battle to bring those folks in, and we don't see that in Habersham right now. And, and part of that, and a good part of that, is your leadership and the culture you're building within the department. Because when we have something going on, I'm on the radio every day, those drivers are stepping up to, to help each other out. And, to take care of our students. So I want to commend you on that. Thank, Thank you, you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Stephanie, do we have any, uh, that I know it said originally on the road yet, do they do the state competition anymore? Um, when COVID hit, the state competition had to stop uh, for that year. It did not get brought back. Okay. However, that's on my agenda once I get out of the presidency. <laughs> I'm going to work and see what I can so yeah. How many, how many buses do we have right now in our fleet? Um, we're, we're, what happens each year is you end up getting some spare buses that they're just not worth right. spending some extra money. So we're running a little on the lower side. So we're sitting around 122 right now. 135 is about the 30, 130, 135 is about normal for us. So we've just kind of started deciding what's not going to live. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. That was You're great welcome. Yes. Yeah. Great job. Okay, item number six. This is going to be really fun here. We've got the new principal president. They're going to come and do a little presentation for us. Mr. Franklin. Yes, sir. Uh, coordinate this. 
Well, Ms. Trotter, would you like to, to go first? I would love to. I'm going to invite Ms. Trotter up, the new principal at Cornelia Elementary, doing a fabulous job. Board, I'm going to let her present. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, board, so much for um, allowing me to come and share some of the fun and excitement we've been experiencing the past month at Cornelia Elementary. August has been filled with all things new for me. Um, and so I have been embracing that. I do want to say um, yesterday was a hard day for us, particularly because we lost one of our retired Cornelia teachers, uh, Miss Jean Irvin. And if you haven't heard, I wanted to share that with you board members, because I know she meant a lot to our community and to our school, especially. And so um, that was a hard loss for us. And we are sad about that, but so thankful for the time and energy and just loving care that she poured into the students all of her years there. Speaking of years, this is the 25th year of Cornelia Elementary in our current location. And I say that because we actually, I finally found the date, I've been searching for it. Um, Cornelia Elementary was founded in 1898. And so um, we are, I'm not sure which location this is, but it is our current location and it is year number 25. So it's our silver anniversary and we're super excited about that but I want to kind of take you back into the summer last year um, Dr. Hudson led us in uh, this theme of rising up and building leaders and so we focused last year on just building just a foundation of success for years to come and Dr. Hudson did a beautiful job of that and so this year I wanted to have a wonderful theme yet again and my wheels were spinning and I just everything I thought of started with a C and so it was just all things C communication community culture collaboration Cornelia all these things and I thought I can't figure out a way to make that something catchy that can go on a t-shirt which is what elementary school is all about what goes on the t-shirt so um, I with my wonderful assistant principal Miss Copeland we decided to kind of put a play on C and so we started looking into themes and just things that people say and one of the things that popped up was um, be the change you wish to see in the world and I was like, ooh, I like that. I like the play on the word C, being all things C. But um, I also like that. I like thinking about us as change makers in the world. And I realized that two things about that saying I didn't like, and that was um, be the change, because actually we can be a change in ourselves. but if we really wanna change the world, we have to lead that change in the world. And so we changed B to lead, and then wish to want because I believe that wishes are just wishes and they're just make a wish upon a star and that is not who we are. So we decided we are going this year to have the theme of lead the change you want to see in the world. And me personally as a principal, I decided to focus on three major goals. One is changing our um, mascot, which was a, a big one for me. And then also changing our the community's perception of us as a school, that was super important to me. And changing our instructional practices as a school and what we're doing in the classroom. I have some of the hardest working teachers in this county and I stick to that. So it's not about just coming in to change things to change things, but actually figuring out what's working with our students. We have a very interesting um, mix of students and our demographic is very unique. And so I wanted to make sure that we are doing what's best for them. And so we have started making changes and I'm super excited to tell you about some of those. Um, Every day, I have the honor of doing something I call Trotter Tap Out Time, and it is when I go in and read to students or teach a lesson for 30 minutes, and the teacher can either go and observe another teacher, one of her colleagues, go and meet with our academic coach, or just catch up on some much-needed work and lesson planning and getting her things together for the next 
part of her day. And um, I love that time with the students being able to read with them or teach them. I got to teach a fifth grade math lesson the other day, and that was so much fun um, for me. And so I just, I love that time in the classroom, but it also gives me a unique insight into what is happening in our classrooms day in and day out with our students. And, and I love that lens of being able to look through the teacher's lens instead of just the principal's lens. On Thursday, we are celebrating one of our staff members. It's all of our staff members, not just our teachers, with just a little treat, and we're calling it the change makers. So on Thursday, we are thankful for our change makers, and we just give them a little bit of change so they can buy their favorite snack or cold drink out of the vending machine. But it's tying back to that theme and just continuing to build that culture of care with our staff. Um, one of the ways that I'm working to change our community perception is through inviting our community businesses and just parents to participate in our Leaders of the Month Party with the Principals. Um, we started that last year with Dr. Hudson having a party with the principals. Once a month, we honor one student from every homeroom and we get they get to come and have a party with us. Some principals do lunch with the principal, we have a party. And um, last year, we used our school funds to purchase snacks and treats for the students. But this year, I'm working with various members of our community to provide those treats and those snacks for us. And so it gives them a way to connect with us as a school and hear about all the fantastic things that are happening at our school. So this past month, United Community Bank partnered with us and Market San Miguel, who is one of our parents, but also a business, they provided ice cream for all of our students at our party. And so that was a lot of fun. And then one event that we are planning, super excited about, a play on our new mascot, which I'll come back to in just a second, is called Pause to Play. Not pause like, it is like pause, like take a break, but we're we're spelling it paws, like a tiger paw. Um, and so we are inviting parents of younger students, um, and when I say younger, I mean not school age yet. These are our um, birth to four years old. They can come once a month, and we have a play session that actually helps parents know how to engage their children in play that will then prepare them for their education to come. So they get to come in, and we teach them strong strategies and ways they can talk to their children, ways they can play with their children and engage their children in learning through play. And so we're super excited about that opportunity as well. Our Tiger Cubs, to end, I got to tell you about our journey to that. We started last year by polling our teachers and finding out they helped us narrow down from a very long list of potential mascots to a short list of three. And then on primary election day last year, we voted. All of our students had a ticket and they had ballot boxes and they got to vote for our mascot and they chose even though it wasn't really my choice, but they chose, they won here, the Tiger Cubs. And so we are super excited about that new mascot and our students have really embraced that. And it has been such a joy and so much fun and such an honor to be leading Cornelia Elementary. Thank you for believing in me. Great job, Ms. Trotter. Dr. Crandall, Principal North Habersham Middle School. Good evening, board. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, I'm super excited to talk about North. North is a place I call home. So two of my kids have now been through North, one's with me right now, and so it has a very special place in my heart. Um, we're off to a really strong start at North this year, so I'm very thankful for Dr. Bagwell and for getting to learn under his leadership for the past three years, and it's really set me up into a great spot to start this school year. Mr. Bolton has been an, a wonderful addition to our staff as our vice principal. Um, he's got a great intuition. He's been working really hard to develop relationships with our students and parents and staff. And so I just wanted to let you know that he has been a wonderful addition to North. Um, Right now, the, the district level support that I've received throughout this year has been fantastic. So I do want to say thank you to Mr. Cooper and Mr. Franklin, to all of our district leaders as well. So our mission statement at North is students at the center. So students are at the center of everything we do. So one thing that we like to do as a leadership team is ask ourselves, is this what's best for students? 
if it's good for students, then it's good for North Habersham. So um, our three core values are student safety, student learning, and student experience. And so this year, one of our main focuses, as every other year, but we've had an extra focus on student safety this year. So making sure that our processes that are in place are best for students, making sure that we have adequate supervision throughout the school day from the time students enter the building in the morning until the time that they get on the school bus or in the cars in the afternoon. We've um, put a, an emphasis on staff training this year with safety. So we have several safety trainings that we've got scheduled with several of our district level staff. Um, we also have some trainings coming up in the spring for um, looking at like social media and how our teachers can help our students navigate, navigate that. Um, Safety drills, we've been working through our safety drills throughout this year, getting our students comfortable as to what to do in different situations. So you can see in our pictures on, on your handout tonight, um, this is so much fun. I had a lot, I had to narrow down my pictures to fit them all on the page. But student learning, we've had such a great start to our school year with student learning. I've been in so many classrooms and seen teachers do amazing things. Our students are engaged in lessons and it's been standards based and um, a high focus on engaging our students this year. We want our students to learn while they're at school and we want them to come to school. So that's been a, a priority for us. Um, seeing lots of hands-on learning, collaborative groups, getting our students to work together and talk together and learn through doing. Some milestones highlights from the past school year. So we started off in a fabulous spot this school year and so our teachers are using that just to propel us into this school year and to have great success this year as well. We were number one in the RESA in eighth grade science and social studies this year. Number two in the RESA in seventh grade ELA in eighth grade ELA and then number three in the RESA in sixth grade ELA. Math scores have not been publicly released yet but I anticipate that they're going to be right up there with our other scores. So we're in a fabulous spot starting the school year. Um, for our student experience, our number one priority is engaging instruction in the classroom. So getting our students engaged and involved. I was walking around today in classrooms and we had students reading collaboratively in groups. We had students building um, cars in their eighth grade science classes. So lots of hands-on learning, learning how to do research in the media center. Um, so that engaging instruction is huge. We also try and get our students involved in as many ways as possible. So having our students start the day for us with the morning news every morning, um, the Bob, Bob, Bobcat broadcast is what we're calling it this year. So our students are starting the day for us with that. Um, we've got our back to school bash coming up next week. So we're excited about that and celebrating the start of the school year and getting into that routine. Um, we do our quarterly incentives to celebrate students that have had wonderful work ethic throughout the year and behavior and then socials. So our eighth graders have their big eighth grade dance every year and then we'll plan some sixth and seventh grade socials for those students as well. Um, we're in the process of planning our Veterans Day ceremony, so that's super exciting So to get our community involved. So I hope that you all can attend when we have that. We'll be sending out more information on that, but getting our students involved as well in that process of Veterans Day. And then finally with our student experience, um, we celebrate our students weekly that have had wonderful behavior, effort, and attendance through Fabulous Friday. And then once a month, we recognize the top students, our top cats, and their great efforts that they've put forth. So I appreciate your support board. And does anyone have any questions? I did talk to you. Me and I talked a lot, uh, usually once a week. And I appreciate what you're doing, man. They said that you're just taking them and showing everything, all the roads, and preparing them for his future, too. And uh, I appreciate that. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Dr. Crandall, last but not least, Dr. Adam Bagman. Martha Cantrell calls you the head raider coming on up. All right. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. All right. Good evening, board. Thank you all for having us this evening and giving me a few minutes to talk about Haversham Central High School. Um, Haversham Central, let me see if I can figure out this clicker, Dennis. There it is. So, first month of school, I can't remember the date that we took this picture, but I asked Rick Wallace, who is um, our audiovisual tech, to 
uh, teacher to get one of his drones out there and take a picture of our campus. And it's just, I mean, it's just kind of breathtaking. You know, for me, it, when you get in the building there, you know, it's, it's a small city um, and there's lots going on. And so to be able to zoom out like that and see the mountains in the background and the pasture land around the campus, it's just beautiful. And it just drives home how fortunate we are to live where we live. Um, how fortunate um, I am to have my kids in the school system and how fortunate I am to be able to serve in the school system at this school. Uh, we do have 1,619 students enrolled as of today and 173 faculty and staff members serving our students there at Habersham Central High School. So our core values uh, are student safety, student learning, and the student experience. And when I talk about our core values with our staff, with our teachers, with our students, I say that they are in order of importance. I mean, there's no doubt that student safety is our number one value, it's our number one priority each day. Student learning, that's our business, it's what we do, so that's number two. And then number three in importance, uh, but certainly very important, is the student experience. So I wanna talk about each one a little bit. Student safety, uh, planning and training are so important. You know, much of what takes place um, for student safety happens during the summer months when we're planning for the upcoming school year. And then throughout the year during pre-planning, training is a big part of that for safety. And then all year long, we have uh, planning period meetings, which are essentially faculty meetings during the school day, um, two times a month. And every planning period meeting is either devoted entirely to student safety or the first part of the meeting is devoted to student safety. So we talk about it um, every single month, two times a month at minimum with our teachers. Um, training that'll be going on throughout the year. I can't say enough and I could talk a long time about our school resource officers and how much I value that partnership and that relationship and how much of an asset to our school, uh, Chief Kogan and Officer Hopper are each day. Their presence in our building, their expertise, their relationships with our students is just phenomenal. And it enhances our safety tremendously to have them in our school. Um, and I'm so appreciative of them and of your support in having them there. And then supervision and processes that we have in place, prioritizing the supervision, Dr. Barron, that you were talking about a few minutes ago, it's a big priority. Um, we've got lots of kids, um, lots of staff to watch our kids, and we take that responsibility very, very seriously. Student learning, um, it's what we do. You know, we are fully staffed. We've got great teachers, great support staff at every level of our school, uh, just doing phenomenal work. I'm, I'm impressed when I walk into classrooms and I hear um, the wisdom and the knowledge and the expertise of our teachers. And frankly, sometimes it's a little intimidating. You know, you walk into an AP calculus class um, feeling like you're not only not the smartest person in the room, but you might be at the bottom uh, when you're me walking in there. But um, just really impressive students, impressive teachers across the board. So um, staffing, we're in great shape. Our student services department, our counselors do such a great job with scheduling, which is a huge piece of the high school um, model and experience. Our teachers with their planning, really prioritizing this year, teachers working together and planning together informally, but also in a systematic formal way to enhance their instruction. Uh, because two great teachers working together will create better lessons than one great teacher working in isolation. And so our teachers are really um, embracing that collaborative planning approach. And then curriculum instruction and assessment, teaching standards through engaging lessons and then assessing students and then following up to reteach or, uh, or revisit units after assessments. And then thirdly, the student experience. So here's a picture of me on the first day of school, stepping way out of my comfort zone there with the, uh, the megaphone at the pep rally with about 1,750 people there in the gym, uh, but just a lot of excitement and enthusiasm, which is what we want our students to experience when they're at school. Um, and we do that, of course, most importantly through our culture, which is just relationships. It's the adults having great relationships with kids, the kids having good relationships with one another, um, the parental support and relationships we have with our community all um, contributes to the culture and the student experience. And then all the great opportunities that our kids have, whether it's athletics, fine arts, CTAE, clubs. Um, our kids just have so many opportunities to be engaged and involved in really meaningful and memorable things. And so uh, we always wanna encourage our students to find things that interest them, find things they care about, find things they're passionate about, and we've got a spot for them. And so um, very appreciative of our staff who serve in these areas um, and for uh, just really proud of our students who participate in each of these areas as well. So that's it, that's Haversham Central High School. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me? 
<laughs> I'm feeling good about it, Mr. Duncan. You know, last Friday uh, was so much fun and it was such a great experience just to, to be there and you know, experience Friday night football and then to get a win and a big rivalry game on top of that the way we did. Really proud of our, our players, our coaches, the band of blue, cheerleaders, student trainers, JROTC, all the people um, that go into that process. So yes, sir, I'm, I'm looking for big things tomorrow night as well. Don't go there. Okay. He's running on the end right now. But you don't even seem tired. I know you're about to still dark. Yes, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, it's, it's been great. And just to, reiter to reiterate what uh, Ms. Trotter and Dr. Crandall said, I'm so appreciative of the support. Um, I can, when, I, when I call a, a district um, leader, a district support person, they answer the phone and they, they, they're willing and ready and able to listen and provide support. Uh, from Mr. Cooper, Mr. Franklin, I mean, Ms. Newsom, Ms. Robinson, Ms. Walker, all of them um, are so supportive of us and their support carries down to our students and our students uh, are the, uh, the ones who benefit from that. So thank you for your support and board, thank you for your support. Well, before, we, before we clap for Dr. Baggett, he deserves support. Let me tell you something, this man, this man's exceptional. Uh, you know, I'm writing on our principals all the time. So blessed to have Dr. Baggett in the school system. The right time. I really believe that. At the right time, he was ready to step up. Difficult job. I think y'all understand what a great and terrible responsibility it is. And I use terrible not in the context people think of as terrible. Terrible can mean significant. And it's a great and terrible responsibility. It really is to be responsible for over 1,000 students. <coughs> this man owns it. He wakes up in the morning thinking about those students and their safety staff members. I tell you what, he's an exceptional job. And they're the ones you get behind Dr. Baden. I've heard nothing but good. I know Mr. Franklin and I quite often have, have received compliments from staff over there. They like this happening. They like this man and his leadership and what he's doing for that school. The kids are happy. Yeah, I like to, you know, brag on the fact that I was out there what was it, one day last week and he got on the intercom and he was talking. And I was still trying to find the room I was supposed to go to. And uh, uh, what really got me, because I've, I've been sitting a lot, of it, the kids were listening. I mean, they were listening to him. I didn't hear anybody hollering at the kids to be quiet and listen. Uh, I started off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I saw everybody standing, uh, doing the pledge. They have their moment of silence, and then, you know, he or somebody, last week it was him talking about some really important things that needed to be, you know, dealt with. And as I was passing by a classroom, my classroom, my classroom, because I was lost, you know, it just was amazing to me as to how the kids were really listening, engaged with him, you know, not having to be, you know,
uh, he said, uh, also, Mr. Kidd's child has passed away. And he was a long time counselor. And uh, ever since that school, he passed away. He passed away yesterday. He did not take the term of teaching. And uh, so let's remember that family. And then, of course, let's not forget the families of the Appalachian community down there. Uh, so sad. Uh, uh, let's just remember those in our prayers. And uh, I'm sure we appreciate that. Well, we're going to have any other comments or questions. Well, I'll give a shout out to the Jeep says, uh, uh, from the Adelaide, where the Chili and him met the Chili Black Man. And the uh, state Adelaide made yeah. a big deal about how, you know, the, that was impressive. Yeah, so good. He had that on his, uh, we'll say Adelaide, but he had on his weekly news or whatever it is, but uh, he was, he was really blocking that. But I found it too, I'm very proud of it. And again, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. Uh, our last item on the agenda is our executive session, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the board member for a motion to go into the executive session, uh, after which we'll take about five, ten minute break and let everybody get out of the room and then we'll come back, okay? So I will entertain a motion this time to go into the executive session. Right, I'm going to go to the session for school safety, personnel, and real estate. Okay, Dr. Mayor, with the motion out here, second. Dr. Preston with the second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all in favor by hand or voice? And five, oh, motion. <coughs> I hope you all have a good weekend. Thank y'all for being here, and we'll take about 10, 15.